What is going on GBA? I am The Confusion and welcome back to Season 8 of the GBA. I am sure all of you are very excited for another season of the GBA, the Global Battle Association. I know I am and I'm sure my guest here is just as excited, so please introduce yourself. Yo, what's up guys? You got Pokey, I'm here and uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited to do uh, another draft league. It's been a little while since I've joined one and with the new game we got, I'm pretty excited to play, so uh, thank you for having me today. Yeah, of course. I'm definitely hyped. Obviously, we've seen you in the UCL, if you guys follow, Season 1, Season 2, and you definitely performed well, so I'm sure we're all very curious to see how you're going to do in the GBA. So, um, hey, this is an interview, so I guess we'll just start with the first question that I have for you here, which is, what was your first Pokemon experience in general? Okay, well, I'm pretty old. I just turned 24, and uh, my first Pokemon experience was watching the first episode on TV uh, in 1998. I believe it was September, and I know later in that year, uh, I got Pokemon Red when it was released as well, which I think was a l like either like shortly after or around the same time. Uh, I'm, I'm not 100% sure on the actual day. I can go check that, but I know that I saw the first episode of Pokemon when it came out. You know, I watched the first entire season as it was coming out, and uh, I just remember playing through Red, uh, that being my first game. So it was, uh, it's been a long time that I've just been enjoying Pokemon and playing it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I definitely know that um, I came in, you know, a little bit later. Gen 4 is really when I when I got into things. But to see you, you know, start off that early is pretty awesome. So on that note, then, what brought you into the realm of competitive Pokemon battling? Uh, I've done a few, like, competitive. Like, I, I don't know, I, I always used to research things. And um, a big thing that got into it was definitely YouTube, I think, that got me into at least Gen 4 competitive. Like, I played a little bit of uh, Net Battle when I was younger. And I also played Shoddy Battle. There were simulators and whatnot. Uh, but I didn't really do much with that and didn't really know what I was doing. But I, I, like I saw on YouTube, I used to watch people like MTG Xerxes. Uh, I even saw Marilyn. And I, I know one day, or I know in Marilyn's description, he says, I'm by no means, like I'm paraphrasing, but I'm by no means like a, the best competitive battler out there. If you want to see true competitive battlers, go to Shoddy Battle, go to Smogon. And that really got me into that. And uh, I think Gen 4 is when I really started... Uh, because I, I played competitive before that, but I wasn't any good at it. But Gen 4 was when I really started to actually get the hang of competitive and whatnot. Um, so that really wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for YouTube. Uh, MBZ, MTG Xerxes, The Shadow Project, all of them just uploading. Back when Pokemon uploading wasn't Let's Plays, it wasn't uh, Wonder Locks or Nuzlocks or any of that. It was just strictly competitive. Uh, people uploading with their DS and webcam. And yeah, I... Since then, I've just been kind of stuck in competitive Pokemon. But of course, I enjoy it. Right. Well, I can't blame you. Obviously, the competitive scene has so much to offer and is a lot of fun. So, kind of piggybacking off of that. So, obviously, you are one of the great PokeTubing uh, uh, you know, uh, YouTubers out here. It's A lot of people obviously love your content because you are definitely a top, uh, top Smogon player and you definitely... Uh, provide a lot of content. So what would you say? Um, well, tell us a little bit about yourself as both a content creator and a competitive battler I mean when I started YouTube uh, I really started because I was like, oh, okay I like watching these guys, but I think I can I can do better than them. You know, I was young. I was I was a teenager I was like mm, I could do better than these guys. So uh, Or I could show better battles or I could play better. So what I did was, you know, I started uploading and um, like since then it was really about teaching and I think I've, I feel like over the years uh, I've always mixed teaching and entertainment like part of my channel you'll have maybe a very serious live where I'm going over certain things or like maybe a road to top 10 where I'm trying to you know climb a ladder or whatnot and then other lives would just be me messing around with my friends and the great thing that I love about my channel and uh, what I love about that content is I haven't really changed in that aspect I've been doing if you go back three, four, five years, you'll, uh, six years even, you'll see stupid videos on my channel with my friends, like from the very beginning, and you'll also see me hopefully try my best, and I hopefully now, you know, that my voice changed a bit from back then, and that <laughs> uh, I feel like I could talk better, uh, hopefully my narrations and my commentary is just a bit better, but like since then, that's pretty much what I've been focusing on, entertainment and also teaching, um, I genuinely love Pokemon, and I've always said that I genuinely love Pokemon, and uh, being able to upload it has been one of the greatest joys for me. So, uh, and when I started stepping more into Smogon and Smogon tournaments, because I've always, you know, followed them, but I really didn't do as much. But I started doing tournaments, um, and I wanted to incorporate that as well because I feel like 
this is the Pokemon that is... I, I, I feel it's, it's the most popular because, yes, VGC is IRL and their tournaments and stuff, but I feel like more players play singles, and I think a lot of that has to do with actual YouTube than VGC, and no disrespect is all to, to the VGC content creators out there. All of them. I love all of them. I love VGC as well, but that's more like a newer thing, I feel, that happened during X and Y that VGC content was really posted. Prior to that, uh, maybe you'll see like a few highlights from tournaments and stuff, but there wasn't really any VGC uploader, I would say, whereas the singles competitive side had like Shofu, me, MBZ, Wild Chase, Flaming Spade, Elo, people like that. Uh, and even going before them, you have like Xerxes and things. And it was just everybody uploading singles. So like I've always tried my best to help the the singles player learn or uh, reach that next level. Um, and at the same time, you know, just me enjoying the game and talking about what I play. Like, I, I yeah. say this whole complex thing, but it's just me narrating <laughs> and trying to like give a thought process behind it. No, yeah, I think it's awesome the way you explain it. It's it's definitely a lot of fun to kind of hear to hear that side of things. So now that we are in Gen 7, or I guess like the second half of Gen 7, um, being that we have Ultra Sun and Moon now, um, a lot of things have changed, right? We have the move tutors, new egg moves, some Pokemon even just having new level up moves. Uh, Mons like Kamo obviously getting access to things like close combat, its own Z move. So obviously there's a lot of changes in the switch from Sun and Moon to Ultra Sun and Moon. So my question to you is what are your personal thoughts on the new Generation 7 move tutors and which Pokemon do you feel benefited the most thanks to those uh, move tutors or egg moves? Well, I generally love the move tutors. Uh, I think Defog is the one that everybody's been asking for since Gen 4. Uh, especially as competitive players, it's a pain to get defoggers up into this generation if we want to do Wi-Fi battles, for example, or anything like that. It's always been a pain, so I love that we got defog. Um, I also enjoyed the fact that uh, Togemaru got Iron Head. I thought that was really cool. Like I, I that Pokemon, uh, it's still electric typing. Love that type, you know, Magnet Zone. It's, it's great. It has a bunch of great resistances and whatnot, immunities as well. So I love that it finally has like a steel stab to abuse. Uh, but Defog is definitely the big one. Um, the majority of great Defog, I think Xerneas is a really big one for Ubers because Choice Scarf can just run something like uh, Moonblast or anything. Um, it can run like a Choice Scarf that can run Moonblast, Defog, Aromatherapy, and be fine. Like that's all the only moves you need. Maybe HP Fire or anything like that. Or like you said, Como for instance, the fact that they finally gave it Dragon Dance and Close Combat. I mean, uh, Close Combat plus... Uh, its own Z move and whatnot. Like they actually made this Pokemon be decent. I thought that was really cool. Um, and I guess the the abundance of sticky web users is pretty sick as well. Like I I always like that I'm able to see a Pokemon and a Pokemon like Rabami, for example, was known before before Baton Pass got banned. It was known as a Quiver Passer or even just a Quiver Dance setup mon. And uh, now it can just do something like instead of Sticky Web as a lead or a Raccoonid, right? A Raccoonid is such a cool Pokemon, such a great ability. And now I could also set up Sticky Web or Rotom, one of the most, uh, one of the Pokemon with the best utility, right? It had will o it had a Volt Switch, an immunity to ground and whatnot, uh, weak to one type, and now it can also defog. So those are some big ones I thought were really big as well. And I really lucky they did with Necrozma. Necrozma got like so <laughs> many cool, so many cool move tutors. So many cool new tutors, and Dusk Main is amazing. It's actually amazing. I think it's the best one out of all of them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like you said, I think the biggest points obviously is the abundance of defoggers now. Some weird ones like I think Klefki and Florgis or Superior, a lot of weird defoggers, but it's definitely cool to see that. And I think it's fair with them. Um, obviously, we have new sticky web uh, users, like you said, we have Slurpuff. Uh, we have Rabombi, we have Araquanid, and we also have a lot of Stealth Rockers, Komo'o getting Stealth Rock, Mudsdale, Palosand, so I think it's fair to see that um, we have a lot more Stealth Rockers, a lot more Sticky Web users, but the Defoggers also uh, rise in usage there, or gained access to those moves, so I think it's going to be fun to see um, how that um, kind of works out, especially in a draft league kind of format. So. My next question to you would be, do you feel that you have a certain strategy when it comes to battling? Obviously, there's stall, hyper offense, bulky offense. What do you feel kind of works best with your style? Oh, you mean like my, my preferred play style? Yeah, your preferred play, play style. What do you prefer, you know, playing? What What's comfortable? I guess, I mean, for me, I play whatever style. It doesn't matter. Hyper offense, stall, uh, balance. But balance has to be like my favorite one just because I like having a defensive backbone to switch on but I also like having some offense offensive pressure that's why it's called balance right 
It's not hyper offense. It's not straight up stall, but you have a backbone to switch into Pokemon, but you also have offensive pressure. Maybe you see like a Greninja or a Tapu Koko on balance, but then you also see like a Feral Thorn as like a Pivot or a Celesteela as well. So that's definitely been my uh, preferred playstyle for a while now. I think black, uh, back in black and white and early X and Y, uh, Hyper Offense was probably the one. I still play Hyper Offense because I used to be a more of a balls to wall type of player back then. Now I'm more like uh, see my win con and you know what's the best possible play I can make. What's the safest way I can do to win this that risk the least. And I think the uh, Pokemon, that's one of the be better ways to play it. Like sure, uh, it's flashy if I triple switch three times and get a kill, right? But if that doesn't... if, if if I win that game, but I also had a way of winning the game where if I played smart and safe I won, I misplayed to win the, the way that I played aggressively. That, that was a terrible misplay and it was a high risk, high reward, right? And I got it, but if I could play it safely, I would argue that playing it safely is just a smarter way to play, right? But even yeah, then, absolutely. even then sometimes that side comes out on me, maybe in tournaments or something, where I just uh, completely... Uh, predict all over my opponent and just play aggressively and don't really care and I think generally that also has to do with the fact that or that has to do with me knowing my opponent's skill level if they're a lot better of a player I'll probably play uh, more aggressively depending but as of right now it has to be balanced uh, back in the day though DVP semi stall and stall were my favorite play styles uh, for the longest time <laughs> I just started playing more aggressive as then but I, like I said I learned from my mistakes that playing aggressive all the time it might win me a couple games on the ladder but in the long term of things it won't uh, right. Yeah, that's just that's how I feel though about that. Love bulky offense though. Love balance. Definitely my preferred play styles. That's awesome to hear. And I think a lot of people learn that, especially from your lives, kind of like focusing on the win con, making sure you uh, you're playing smart. Even if there's a way to win that's a little riskier, if you play it the smart way, it's it's the safest way. And you know you're you're bound to see more uh, more wins than losses that way than any other. So I definitely agree with with your point of view on that. That's great. So my last question, right before we get into the lightning round, is obviously the draft league is way different than let's say VGC or Smoke on Singles or any of that. So so what do you feel are the most essential components of a good draft team? I mean I don't know about that. Uh, especially like, like go take it back to Smoke on Singles for example or a tournament game, right? Uh, a good tournament player will scout their opponent, see what playstyle they use, and see what Pokemon they have, and then maybe counter style them while also just having a good team in general. I think that's very similar to draft. Uh, in fact, I would argue that building is a lot more fun in draft, and uh, I'll probably get some hate for this, but I think building is easier in draft than it is uh, for an actual like singles tournament, just because I can actually see what my opponent can bring. And you could also argue that's worse for you, right? Because your opponent also sees what you bring, and they can decide what you bring, and then counter right. team it, right? right? But I think that aspect is so cool, because out of all 800 and something Pokemon, my opponent has these 12, these 14, these 15 Pokemon that I can bring. I have these. How can my 15 do best to beat this? So, I don't know. I, in that aspect, like I, uh, I think that a, a solid draft is... Obviously important, but you telling me to explain the solid draft, so that's a bad <laughs> answer there. Um, I don't know. I'm also a really big firm believer in a Pokemon is as good as uh, a Pokemon can be better than like the way some people use it. Like I think I that agree. anything could be good in draft as long as you know what your opponent has and you have like. Uh, the support for it. For example, like maybe my opponent's really weak to Babero, right? Maybe I draft a Babero. My opponent's so weak to it, but I'm not going to try and set up with my Babero when my opponent has like a max HP defensive Tangrowth still alive or like a Ferrothorn still around, right? But maybe with the right support or I'll, I'll try and weaken the Ferrothorn. I'll try and burn it. I'll try and trick it and make Babero win. So I think that drafting is like drafting like with synergy and uh Things like that, Pokemon that are either really good at what they can do. So I'll give the example of Weavile. Weavile is fast, has priority, can trap with pursuit, can spam knockoff, can use Ice or Crash, all right? It might be pretty quote-unquote one-dimensional, but it's really good at what it does, so that makes it good in draft, right? But then right. you'll have a Pokemon like Mew or Clefable, which are also really good at what they do, right? They can be defensive, they can be combine variants, but they also have this ridiculously wide move pool that makes them even better. So I feel like that's really important. I feel like having a ground type is super important in general too. I hate the idea of my opponent volt switching on me the entire time, volt switching and U-turning, and uh, I don't know from that like it's really. I just feel like any Pokemon really has potential, right? And maybe somebody might say, "Oh, well, Spindle doesn't." Well, like sure, maybe, <laughs> maybe, but it, maybe I'll get a matchup where Trick Room Spindle with Super Power Contrary can win if I get up layers of Spike and stuff like that. So I don't know. Um, also, I feel like. 
and this is how I feel when I play Pokemon in general. Hazard control is only necessary if your team is weak to hazards. So, the example I would use is, if I'm using a team, let's use my old draft, right? Reuniclus, Tangrowth, Alamola. Alright, all the, two of the, one of those Pokemon has Magic Guard, three of them have Regenerator. So, right. Stealth Rock, I don't care about my opponent getting up Stealth Rock when I'm coming in and recovering my health, or I have Wish Pass and things like that. So, um, while I think Hazard Control is important if you have Pokemon like Charizard, or, you know, Moltres, Articuno, Zapdos, whatever, Pokemon always weak to that. I don't think it's something that you gotta stress yourself out over. So, so basically, the most essential components of a good <laughs> draft team is just building well, man. That's it. No, I think you make some great points there, especially when it comes to the idea that a Pokemon is only as good as the as the person using it. Like you kind of said, like you can make any Pokemon useful, especially in the right matchup. So I mean, and I think that's obviously the beauty of of how Pokemon works. It, anything can work in any specific matchup as long as you can um, find the right support for it. So I think you make a very good point in that. Obviously, a ground type Volt switching is ridiculously annoying. Obviously, u turns a little easier to deal with because you have things like Intimidate or Will-O-Wisp or Rocky Helmet, yeah, yeah, whatever the case may be. So I definitely think Volt Switch is a lot more annoying. So having a reliable ground type that usually isn't four times weak to something because, you know, hidden powers usually end up hurting you there. But yeah, I think you make some good points there. So finalizing this amazing interview, I've been loving your answer so far. I've got some, uh, I've got some lightning round questions for you. Basically what's going to happen is I'm going to give you a couple different options, two, maybe three, maybe four, and you just have to quick, couple seconds, don't even think about it, tell me what you prefer. Okay. Alright, you ready? Alright. Here we go. Kalos or Alola? Alola. Ultra Sun or Ultra Moon? Ultra Moon. Attack or Special Attack? Attack. That's a hard Defen one. Yeah. Defense or Special Defense? Definitely Defense. <laughs> Tailwind or Trick Room? Trick Room. Showdown or Cartridge? Ah, that's a hard one. <laughs> Showdown for battling cartridge because I love the way it looks, which is the only reason why I joined the GBA. That's fair. All right. Gyms or trials? Gyms. Trials are pretty much the same thing. <laughs> Sweep or stall? Stall if I need to. <laughs> T-Wave, Toxic, or Willow? Toxic when it lands. <laughs> Electric, Misty, Psychic, or Grassy? Electric. Fire. <laughs> Defog or Rapid Spin? Defog. Always. Last one, GG or Rage Quit? <laughs> GG Caps period. There we go. All right, guys. So that was the interview with none other than Joey Pokeying. Thank you, man, for uh, for doing this with me. I'm sure we all learned a lot, and uh, I think that's pretty exciting. Oh, thank you so much for having me, man. It was definitely a lot of fun. Uh, the lightning round was interesting because that's a lot to talk <laughs> about. Uh, but I, I didn't expect it like that. I, I wasn't sure exactly. But yeah, thank you so much for having me. I hope you guys are excited for the Bronze Bear Ticks and the, U uh, the UCL and the GBA. <laughs> Um, should be a lot of fun hoping to use whatever Pokemon I get as or whatever Pokemon I end up with as my uh, or to the best of their abilities because I'm a firm believer in any Pokemon can be good as long as you have the right tools the right support for it so it should be a lot of fun yeah I know I'm excited I know you guys are all excited so make sure you hit that like button again check in the description for all you need to know all the coaches links will be in the description when uh, when they're all announced I think by this time you see this they will all be announced so make sure you do that check out the official GBA fan discord check out our Twitter check out our page and be sure to get excited for the GBA that is coming up shortly again Joey thank you for coming on appreciate it man I appreciate it as well so uh, goodbye, friends. See you guys.